Hey, I wanted to do a follow-up video to talk about our responsibility when it comes to the five love languages. I just finished writing a series on the five love languages and with that knowledge, we're able to love one another and advocate for love for ourselves. But we also need to be very careful um, that we honor people with that knowledge. So I thought what better location to make a video about that than in my garden, because gardens are a lot like relationships. We cultivate them in similar ways. That sounds silly, but let me explain. <laughs> so with our plants, we know that they need light from the sun and that they need water. And we also know that they need fertilizer, but not every plant uses the same fertilizer. Just like not every human loves in the same way. I'm slightly distracted because my cat has come to visit me. She loves it when we're outside <laughs> and always wants to curl up underneath my feet. Her primary love language is physical touch. So not every plant needs the same type of fertilizer, just like not every human needs the same type of love. And in fact, some plants, if you put the wrong fertilizer on it, it could die. Um, some plants love water on their leaves and other plants will get sick if they get too much water on their leaves, like your zucchini and your squash. So a lot of times we have this idea that we're loving people adequately when in fact we're missing very key ingredients in the way that we're approaching them. And we can also really hurt people if we hurt, if we, <laughs> my cat hit my stand, if we hurt them um, through their love language. So for instance, my love language is words, words of affirmation. So if somebody's love language is words of affirmation and you attack them with your words, that is going to impact them so much more deeply than other individuals. Not that negative words don't impact everyone, but for the person whose primary love language is words of affirmation, you've just taken what fills their love tank and turned it very um, negative. And then the same for physical touch. Sometimes when we're mad at, say, our partner, we may not feel so warm and fuzzy, but if their primary love language is physical touch, we don't want to withhold from them. The same goes for all of the love languages, acts of service. If you're having a conflict with somebody who's an acts of service person, you're not going to restore your relationship by not doing the dishes or not taking out the trash or doing the things that you wouldn't typically do for them. I know it's hard when we're angry. Restoration of a relationship isn't always top priority, but ultimately if that relationship is valuable to you, and worth anything. It's worth an approach that fills their love tank, not one that empties their love tank and sabotages it. So with a gift giver, don't withhold gifts. And with quality time, definitely do not deny them of quality time. Doing a video, video outside is much different. You have so much less control over things, but hey, it makes it more real. So let's think about the way that we're loving others and to make sure that we're not attacking them with their primary love language. And think about your kids too, like your little ones that have needs. You know, this is kind of my beef with parenting books is that, and, and most of them will say there's not a one size fits all approach. However, some approaches can be very detrimental to some kids because it doesn't nurture their primary love language. So I think that with any tactic that you're gonna use in parenting, make sure that it lines up with your child's love language so that you're not squashing their spirit, but that you're um, building it up. So I hope this was helpful. Be well, go out and love others, and love yourself, be kind, be blessed.